Twelve. I will read uh, Exodus twenty. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto unto them, unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do anything in any work, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy maid servants, nor thy maid, thy man servants, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon, thy, upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid servant, nor his, his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's. And all the people saw all right, thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's read the big All right. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'd like to say peace in Jesus' name. The title of the message is uh, Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem. The reason why I titled the message is because Jerusalem is the hot spot in the world today. And most of the people in the world do not uh, understand, well, most of the Israelites in the world do not give a care or they just don't understand that what's going on in Jerusalem is really, really need to understand what's going on. And Jerusalem is a land that was given to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we need to understand that that is our land. But we're so busy now today worried about vaccinations worry about masks, worry about stimulus checks, PPP loans, all these things of this world, cares of this world is grinding out what's going on, going on over there in the room. But we're gonna to try to break this lesson down so you'll understand that it's very important that we pay close attention and focus on what's going on over there because when the time comes, it's gonna be peace all over the world. And the Antichrist is going to reign in Jerusalem at the time. And before he comes, he's going to make sure that there's peace. So this lesson is put together to make sure that most that people understand you're not praying for the Jewish people. You're praying for the land. Big difference. You understand that you don't need them cats over there. That's the synagogue of Satan. Period. And they got a whole bunch of war going on over there between brothers. The Muslims, the Jewish people, and Israel don't even give a care what's going on. Those are Abraham's two sons. Well, Abraham one son, which is Ishmael. He came from Abraham's first son. Then you got 
Esau, I mean, you got Jacob and Esau. All they are warring over a spot of land that is not theirs. And the one that is supposed to be given to them don't even understand that you need to pay attention to what's going on over there. So we're going to turn to Psalms 122. We're going to start with verse 8. Psalms 122. We're going to start with verse, excuse me, verse 1. Eight. Mm -hmm. Psalms 122 and verse 1. We need to understand that Jerusalem is very important. Not for the people that's in the land right now. We praying for the land, peace, because we know when peace comes, then sudden destruction gonna come. So let's, let's, let's understand this lesson. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not praying for the people of Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem. Psalms 122, we'll start with verse one. When you get it, brother, go ahead. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. See, they was glad. James, get it going. Jesus was glad. I mean, said David was glad to come in the house of the Lord because he need to understand what's going on in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the trials of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. He says, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up. Most of the world don't understand that you have to come up to the capital city, the headquarters, and take part of the holy days. That's why we are practicing today to understand once we get into the land, we will understand what to do. And most people that get into the land, they don't understand what to do, and a lot of them are going to die right at that before they get into the wilderness. We know what this means. At least I know what this means. When you go up to worship, go ahead. Whether the tribes go up of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. But there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. See, there are set thrones of judgment. Very important. We want to be there when that time comes when God chooses his first resurrection people, the ones that are going to judge upon thrones. Very important that you understand what's going on in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that the love be, that love be. He said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Not the people, the peace of Jerusalem. If you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, he said, they shall prosper that love thee. You prosper. Most people don't even think about praying toward the east. We pray toward the east, but we pray for the land so God will hear us and bring us back. That's why the world, that's why the land is mourning now. That's why they got wars going on in the land because we're not there in our proper spot. You got to make sure that the people there carry out the laws and the statutes. That's how you make the land at peace. But the ones in the land, they are the sinner God of Satan. And let me show you. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Let's see why we should not pray for the Jewish people in Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 2. Because you got a lot of people saying, man, we need to pray for the folks over there in Jerusalem. Pray for the folks. No, you got to understand. You need to pray for the Israelites that are scattered all over the world. If they want to come under the battle of Israel, then you deal with them. But what they're doing now, they carry, Satan is carrying, they're carrying out Satan orders. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Let me show you. Go ahead, bro. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. He said, I know thou words of tribulation and poverty. You know Israelis don't have money. We don't have the resources that a lot of people have. We poverty, we poor, the majority of us. He said, but you are rich. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now you say you Jews? 
We said we Afro-American, African-American, colored, Negro, all these things. And nobody told me I was a Jew when I was coming up. I was told I was a Gentile, just like y'all were told, told. We were grafted in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all know what that means. You better look at Sunday <laughs> church and they tell you this stuff. He said, the ones that are calling themselves Jews, they are not. They are the synagogue of the church of Satan. This is their spot. God is giving them their time. We're going to understand, understand what it means by the synagogue of Satan. Let's look at it again. Revelation chapter 3 and 9. Revelation chapter 3 and 9. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. He said he's going to make them come and worship before our feet. They are of the synagogue of Satan. So why are you praying for them? You need to be praying for your brother and sister. Pray for the land that become peaceful. Because when they become peace, God is going to bring us back. And then that's when he's going to start the great tribulation. <clears throat> Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 4. I just want to make sure that we understand we're praying for the land. And the other Israelites are scattered all over the world. That's who we need to be praying for. Because when cats over there call themselves us, they have taken our identity. And that is our twin brother Esau. He knows what he's doing. But I'm going to show you. Let's see who God promised Jerusalem to. We need to understand this land is ours. Instead of worrying about the things of this world, how to prosper in this world, it's okay to have some of these things, but don't let them be your main focus. We need to be focused on that land over there so God can bring you and I over there to run it. But if we don't know that's our real estate, we won't even give a care like most people today. Don't give a care. Israel I'm talking about. Galatians chapter 4 verse 22. Let me show you something you told uh, talking about our forefather and who we were promised to. Go ahead. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by bondmaid and the other by free woman. So Abraham had two sons. We're going to find these two sons. It's Isaac and Ishmael. Go ahead. But he who was the bond woman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Because the bond woman was Hagar, born after the flesh. God had ordained that to happen. That was something he, that when he followed his wife and wanted to have a baby with her. God told him it was going to be Sarah and Abraham. He ain't mentioned nothing about Hagar. But she wanted to play God and tell him what to do. And he went on ahead and followed it. And that's the reason why you got these brothers over here fighting each other. Some of them fighting with each other because she tried to tell him what to do. When you follow somebody else beside God, you make them their, you make them your God. When you follow somebody else besides God, go ahead. Which things are an allegory, but these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, uh -huh. gender, the bondage, which is a Hagar. 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 The same thing as Hagar. It's Hagar. He said, these, he said, which things are allegory, meaning this is a parable to illustrate something. For these two covenants, one from the Mount Sinai, which generated to bondage, which Hagar. Hagar was the bondage one. She was her maid. The covenant wasn't with her Hagar and Ishmael. The covenant was with Sarah and Abraham with their son Isaac. That's who the land is promised to. But the Muslim, which is Ishmael's Ismael seed, are fighting over the land like it's theirs. Then you got the Jewish people fighting over the land like it's theirs, which is Esau. Go ahead. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai and Arabian and to answer to Jerusalem, which now is and is a bondage with her children. Go ahead. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Meaning everybody derived from Jerusalem. That's where civilization started. The, uh, the, the uh, Garden of Eden and all that started from around that way. That's Canaan. 
All of that is to mother us all. That's where life started. Go ahead. For it, uh, for it is written, rejoice thou, bearing that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travelest, travelest not, for the desolate hate many more children than she which had an hundred a husband. A husband, go ahead. And now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of the promise. He said, now we brethren as Isaac was as children of the promise. We are from the seed of Isaac. What is the promise? It's the land. Amen. The land and salvation if we follow after the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He just giving us an allegory or a story of what happened while we got this that war going on. You got the Muslim fighting, you got the Jewish people fighting, and both of them, they have no rights to the land at all. It's about us. Go ahead. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Yes, sir, because once them two boys were born. They go on part of what we're persecuting Sarah, saying that, oh, you can't have a child. That's why she wanted to kick her out. But God bless her, God, and those with 12 sons of herself with Ishmael. Go ahead. So it is So it is now, 30, nevertheless, what says the scripture. Cast out the bondman, bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So he telling people that if you don't understand the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Sarah, and Hagar, you want to know what he's talking about. He's illustrating something that we should understand about our land. Go ahead. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We are not children of Hagar, but we are children of Sarah and Abraham. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 17 to understand. Pray for Jerusalem. Talking about the land, because that is our real estate. The stuff we pay for not on this land over here, we still got paid for. Pay taxes on it. It's never, it never yours. But this right here is yours <laughs> and mine. I still got to pay no taxes. <laughs> Pretty sure everybody else in here on the house got to pay no taxes too. Gen uh, Genesis chapter 17 and 1. Let's see what this allegory was or the story is and how it illustrates who the bonds one and who was the free one. Go ahead, brother, verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Yes, sir. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is within thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. So he told Abraham he's going to be a father of many nations at 99. <laughs> I mean, that takes some faith to kind of like roll with that. At 99. And Sarah was 90. So he tell him you're going to be a father of many nations. Go ahead. <laughs> neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham, but thou shalt be. He said, neither thy, neither name, thy name shall be oh, called. Hold up. Hey. No, neither thy name. It is more because. Listen to me. Uh, Stop. So again, go ahead. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham. Abram. Uh -huh. Abram. Uh -huh. But the name shall be Abraham. This is the time when he changed the name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many nations. Go ahead. A father of many nations have I made thee. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Yes, sir. Kings shall come out of thee. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and the generations of the everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. All this means something. He said he's going to establish an everlasting covenant. It don't end with your seed. But Abraham had many seeds, as we're going to find out. But it's only one seed. 
that he's honored. Go ahead. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land where the, wherein thou art strangers, all the land of Cana and the everlasting possessions. That's and right. I will be their God. This is what he took me. He said, this is the reward for me choosing you and your kids. They're going to have an everlasting land that's going to be theirs. Their seed, land of Canaan, which is called, if you, Canaan is Africa. Israel is a part of Africa. All of it is Africa, if you want to just understand it. Canaan, same thing as we call Africa today. Israel is the capital city. It's connected to it. That's the headquarters. Or Jerusalem. That's the headquarters. He promised Abraham all of that. And that's why they fight so hard to rule because that land has a lot of riches. A lot of riches. But the people that the land is promised to don't even give a care. Go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in thy generation. Yes, sir. You got to keep the covenant. What was the covenant? Go ahead. This is my covenant, which she shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That is the first covenant. Every male child must be circumcised. You got to take part of that to be accepted. Don't be outside of the covenant. Because they tell them, wait in the day, the kids don't need to be circumcised. That's cruel and all that stuff like that. No, this is the covenant of God. Jump down to verse uh, 14. Go ahead. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that, show, that, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He that has broken my covenant. So your soul is going to be cut off from his people if you break that covenant. Go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. This is the change of her name, because she's going to be a mother. Go ahead. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. He said he's going to bless her. This is the thing between Sarah and Abraham. Nobody else. Nobody else. But like I said, Sarah tried to do God's work and say, Brother Hamid, hey God, now, to marry Abraham. It's not going to work. This is the covenant right here between you two. This is who going to get the land. This is who the bearer of the covenants. Go ahead, verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me? That is a hundred years old, mm -hmm. and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? So he was laughing like, man, come on, I'm a hundred, my wife is ninety, we gonna have a child, but you got to have faith. They faith was shook right here. This is what Ishmael came on, and Hagar came about. Go ahead. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. He said. Let Ishmael already have a son. We already worked that out, God. No, no, no. That's not the covenant. Go ahead. And God said, Sarai, thy wife shall bear thee a son in yes, thee, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. This is where the land, this is who the land belongs to. Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, and the Israelites. Not Ishmael, his other wife by Hagar. No, they tried to do that thing on their own. But this is why we got that fighting over here now. You got the Muslim fighting, and you got the Jewish people fighting, which is Esau. And the Israelites that's scattered all over the world don't know what's going on, and it's their property. Go ahead. And for us, Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be begot and I will make him a great nation. God said, I heard you about Ishmael. I'm going to bless him. I'm going give to give you twelve princes. That's why the Arabs got a lot of oil over there and money. They got blessed too, but they do not own that land. Go ahead. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee 
at this set time in the next year. Yes, sir. And, he, and he left off talking with him and God went from Abraham. He said, went, from, went up from Abraham. Uh, he said, look, this company going to be with Sarai. Nobody else. Go ahead. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in that self same day, as God had said unto him. So everybody got circumcised in Abraham's household. Go ahead. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. So, so much for being too old, huh? <laughs> 99 years old, he was circumcised. All this means something. This is the layout. This is the foundation of our forefathers. And many people do not know this. They can't go back and give you the players of the book. They can tell you about all this other little minor stuff that they were doing in, in, in the camps. But when they come to breaking all this down, they won't go there and do that because it's too much reading for a lot of people. But this is very important that we know. So God seeing out our mind that we know and we're trying to follow, he's going to choose us to help him run that land. Go ahead. And Ishmael, his son, was 30 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Yes, sir. And the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son. Mm -hmm. And all the men of his house was born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised with him. And got within that covenant, being circumcised. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20. I just want to give you the foundation of who the land is for. Who has the birthright? Now I'm going to show you how we got kicked off the land. Let's see how we got kicked out of the land. Our forefathers didn't want to follow the laws and statutes. Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're going to start with verse 15, then we're going to jump to 63. Let's see how we, well, we already know it here, but how we got kicked out of the land. Go ahead, bro. But it, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I have commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these are some, see, some of the curses, but I'm focusing on one curse that got us off the land. How do we get scattered all over the world? Jump down to verse 63. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall speak, you shall be plucked from all the land whether thou goest to possess it. He, went, he told Israel, he brought them that to possess it. He said, because you broke these laws, I'm going to pluck you off the land. This is what happened in 70 AD when General Titus and Van Spassie came and took Israel off this land. It scatters all over the world. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And thou and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. This is why we serve in uh, the Kaaba song, got the Muslim. They in Muslim religion. They serve in a uh, Christmas tree. They serve in uh, pictures of white Jesus. He said, when you go into this land, this is what you're going to do. You're going to serve these other gods. The God of Mother's Day, Father Day, Christmas, all these gods that this nation, Israel, is served. We don't know who we are. But this is how we got plucked off Jerusalem, our possession, our land. Go ahead. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall thy soul or thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee their a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. If that don't pinpoint who these people are, we ain't got no ease out here in this world. From the police to the judges to the lawyers to everybody, you ain't got no money. You probably ain't gonna, you ain't gonna fail too well in this court system. We finding no ease. He said, I'm gonna plug you off. These are some of the curses that I'm gonna give you for not 
Uh, keeping my laws. Go ahead. 